Welcome to Short Arts. This is my take on one of the text works from Vernon Arnke's Cant Chant exhibition from 2007. My reading of this work is as a white settler in Australia living on stolen land. I want to unpack some of the ways in which this artwork critiques white possession. The work reads, your duty is to accept me. My duty is to tolerate you. In Arnke's text works, he strategically removes the spaces between the English words. This is a fascinating decolonial approach for a number of reasons. Firstly, using plain text in art has a long history in activist and decolonial art practices. One reason is that direct text cannot be misinterpreted. It says what it says and confronts the viewer with the meaning of the work. Even if you spend mere seconds with it, you have to engage and read it. Text art demands to be read and your brain refuses to see it just as an image. Graffiti scrawled across private property or school desks has the same radical effect. It cannot be ignored. The use of second person is key here too. The work is directed at you, at me, at us. The audience is implicated in the work because they are, and the gallery is, part of a colonial system. The settler audience is not excused for their looking. Likewise, the use of first person for the artist means that he is telling us. This is not an idea that's been abstracted or mediated through the artwork. The use of text is also an anti-art or an anti-aesthetic in that it resists being discussed in purely aesthetic terms. Many art critics often avoid politics of art by deferring to aesthetics or how pretty something is. Aunt P does not allow settler strategies to avoid the issues, and in part is a response to the historic simplification of Aboriginal painting practices to aesthetic concerns. Aunt P's approach is a brilliant response to the problem of using a colonial tool of oppression, namely English, to challenge that very same oppression. The teaching of English is a deliberate violence aimed at erasing First Nations cultures and languages. It is the language of institutionalized racism. And as I am demonstrating right now, it is the language of global art history. But the insidiousness of English is the way that speakers are naturalized into it. For settlers who only speak English, the way we think and express ourselves naturalizes white possession. Speaking English unthinkingly is directly part of living on stolen land unthinkingly. As Aileen Morton Robinson says, Aunt Key's work powerfully demonstrates the resilience of indigenous sovereignty and its ability to disturb ontologically the performativity of white possession. Aunt Key's text works disrupts the performance of white possession. His tactic to remove the spaces between words means that English speaking settlers like me are confronted by the making difficult of something that we take as easy. Or to put it another way, it shows the construction of something we feel is natural. Suddenly I have to decode. I have to pause and put the words together. I construct the meaning and consciously feel myself putting the words together. I am complicit in making the sentence. In doing so, it exposes the performative ontology of settler claims. By making English difficult for native speakers, it questions the fundamental instruments of colonization. The artwork tells us we need to question all our assumptions. We need to question the knowledge we take for granted. And we need to make difficult all that we think is natural before the violence of ongoing settler colonization can start to be confronted. <laughs>